Okay. So obviously this does not predict the products because I already showed you the product. So um, this is a synthesis problem. Synthesis, your job is to come up with some reagents. Now there may be more than one step in a synthesis. You may have to do two or three steps. We don't know ahead of time. Can anyone propose some reagents that would help get us from the starting materials to the products? Well, it looks like we're going to have to do E2 or E1. So we need to have um, a good nucleophile. Oh, we we're going to probably do SN1 with a good nucleophile and a secondary carbon. I mean E1, not SN1. Not, just not E2 is what I meant. Why not? Because it's on the secondary carbon, and on the secondary carbon, it's never E2, except unless it's like a really strong base. And bulky. Yeah. Or bulky. But okay, let's talk through it. Uh, we have a bunch of good ideas there. Now, what type of reaction is going to happen here? Substitution or elimination? Elimination. Yes, yeah. should be clear there's elimination, because that's the way we've learned <coughs> for making double bonds. I mentioned last time that synthesis is like doing a puzzle. It's not like a normal problem. You have to do a puzzle, and the way you do the puzzle is carefully asking what has changed from the starting material to the product. What has changed? Well, one big thing that changed is we introduced a pi bond. And we know our main way to introduce a pi bond is elimination, especially because between what two atoms have we introduced a pi bond? Between what kind of atoms? Primary two, carbons. two carbons. Two carbons. So you want to be specific about the atom too. Well, I think we only know one way to introduce a carbon-carbon pi bond. We only know one way to make a carbon-carbon pi bond, which is elimination. So we're going to use elimination here. And we've learned two different types of elimination. We've learned E2 and E1. We've learned about E2 and E1. Now, which of these is better for synthesis? And the answer is you, almost, um, you generally want to avoid using E1 for synthesis. There are some uh, exceptions, but you generally want to avoid using E1 for synthesis. And the reason is, remember that E1 usually is accompanied by SN1. Last time we saw that SN1 and E1 usually go together, right? Um, but in a synthesis, you want to get this as your only or at least your major product. It's not good enough to get this as a minor product. This has to be the only or the major product. And there's a very high danger that if we try to do an E1, we'll get too much SN1. In fact, substitution usually outnumbers elimination when they compete. So th there are some exceptions to this, but for the most part, E2 is safer than E1. Let's take a look at the SN2 handout. So then you need a good nucleophile that's a strong base and to get E2. Minus. Say again. NaOH minus. NaOH minus. That doesn't sound too bad. Okay. So let's take a look at the um, the handout for SN2. SN2 handout. If y'all have that with you. The the chart. chart by the way. Yeah. Table. Let's look at the chart on page three of the SN2 handout. Okay. Now um, I think that you're basically right. This probably would work with just uh, hydroxide. This is probably enough steric hindrance to work with hydroxide. But again, to be on the safe side, we want to make sure there's not going to be any SN2. So how can we ensure there's not going to be any SN2? Um, what, be bulky. Yeah. And what would be a good bulky base to use? Terp-butyl Yeah. So our best bet here is going to be terp-butyl oxide. Or LDA. Is that a reagent you guys have seen used in class? LDA? Yes. Yeah. So LDA and terp-butyl oxide, these are both good bulky bases. So these are our kind of mainstays for synthesis. These are good mainstays for synthesis. Because if you look at the chart, if you use one of these, we're in the far right column on page 3. right? We're in the far right column, which is always E2. If you look at that far right column, it's always E2. There's no question of any competition from anything else. Because there's way too much steric hindrance to ever do an SN2 um, over here. Um, and you can see there's never any SN1 or E1 in that far right column either. So for synthesis, these are your safest bet. Um, uh, when you're putting in a double bond. And there's maybe a, a, a couple of exceptions, but usually for elimination, this is the way you want to go, with a nice, a strong, bulky base. Either of these uh, would be fine, and that would give us this over here. So what I'm confused is, no, wouldn't, because wouldn't, oh, whoa, well, I drew, you changed the card, sorry. I had previously found out how it was before, but I didn't erase that line. Okay, so a good answer here would be terpetal oxide. Incidentally, when I looked at the sample exam, um, so the sample exams are from your instructor, right? One thing I noticed is he seems very concerned about drawing both the reagents and the solvent. Every problem asks you for both the reagents and the solvent, if you notice that in the exam. So um, some instructors don't care about that that much. But that means that you um, kind of need to have, uh, be putting in uh, good solvents in here. Um, well, so how's E2? Should it be DMF? 
Uh, that would be safe here. Basically, a, a good aprotic solvent would be fine here, any aprotic solvent. Why don't you want to use someone protic? Because if you use someone protic, it would protonate your base, which would cancel it. You got to be careful to preserve your base. So uh, a good aprotic solvent would be uh, uh, a fair solvent here. So okay. you should watch out for that on the exam. If the, if the test says to show reagents and solvents, make sure you're, you're, you're at least giving yourself a chance to get full credit by putting in the solvents too. What's a good protic solvent? Anyone can think of a protic solvent? Sure. Yeah, water. <laughs> water or methanol or ethanol. Again, we wouldn't want to use those here because they would protonate our base. Um, but um, if we wanted a protic solvent, water would be fine or an alcohol. What base do we have? I'm sorry? Well, we decided we'd use one of these bases. Okay. Right. Remember, we were going to use a, a strong, bulky base okay. uh, because we want an E2 reaction. Technically, wouldn't NaOH be o NaOH minus be okay? Because since it's, SN, um, since it's secondary, it's only going to attack. Yeah, you might get full credit for that. But if you look at the table, remember the table says at the bottom that it was only showing you the major reactions. There can be significant competing reactions. So NaOH would probably give you mainly this, but it would give you quite a bit of SN2. So it's safer to give you to try. You want to try to get as much as possible a pure product. But over how here. do you know it would give you SN2? It doesn't say that in the table. But notice at the bottom it says that um, the table displays the major reaction for each case. In some cases, there are significant levels of competing reactions. And that's often the case with E2 and SN2. Okay. Um, so again, the safest thing is, again, your job here is to try to get as a pure an outcome here as possible. Uh, and then the way to do that is to put in a, a bulky base, because what's the big obstacle to SN2? Hindrance. Steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. So if we're worried about an SN2, let's put in something very bulky. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, so let's do this synthesis problem. Right. Now remember that for synthesis, you don't necessarily have to show every single mechanism. You just have to put in the reagents. It might help you to do the mechanisms to understand what's going on, but maybe we can just propose the reagents. What, what reagents should we have here in step one? ER2 or... Yeah, that's pretty much it. And lighter heat. And what product is that going to give us? Where's the BR going to end up? At the middle. That would give us this. Now, you don't have to show this to get full credit, but it's, it's important for you to do that for your thinking. And then you should ask, what should we add to this? Now we add our strong base. And that will get us to here. So all you need for full credit is to write these two things. On this and this is problem, you would get full credit if you wrote these two things. However, it is useful for you to actually draw the intermediate for your own benefit, so you can make sure you're on the right path as oh, you're going. Oh, if they just ask you, what are the reagents and solvents? That's right. If they just ask you, uh, if it's just a synthesis problem, and they ask you, what reagents do you need to get from here to here, you can just put in this. I guess he might give you a problem where he also asks you specifically to show the intermediates, too. Yeah. But very often, they just, um, and very often um, they just are asking you for the reagents. You should probably still write down the intermediates just for your own thought processes. And should you write down the mechanism? Well, when it's helpful. Probably you wouldn't do the mechanism for radical halogenation because it's kind of long and complicated, and I think we haven't really mastered that. So you just go straight to the product. And uh, would you show the mechanism here? Well, I don't know if you thought it would help you. Okay? All right. So uh, we're getting more complicated here. Uh, 